okay, we're gonna go ahead and open with our scripture. You know, our scripture comes from chapter 10, 3, 15, 16, I mean 16, 17, and it right. says, All, All scripture, scripture is given, given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. <laughs> I love thinking about what God has already given us because it opens up our heart for what He's going to do next. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for blessing us to be in your presence one more day. We thank you that you gave us health and strength that we could come and commune with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here, for you promised where two or three are gathered in your name, there you'll be. Lord, so we fear you in our midst right now, and because of that, we have peace. And so we thank you for that. And yet, even as we come before you, Lord, we don't want anything to block our fellowship with you, so we humbly ask you to forgive us for anything that we may have said, thought, or did that was displeasing to you. But truly, we need your spirit to commune with us right now. Lord, we ask you to talk to us through the scripture and through your word so that we will have a greater understanding of what you have for us to do in this earth. And that we will be greater witnesses and examples of what it means to serve the true and righteous God. We thank you for what you've already done, and we look with great expectation for the things you're going to say to us today. And we count all this done in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, as I was preparing, I was like, first of all, we had the extra week. And, you know, normally it's, 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 it's so vital when we get those because God's got to do something. Yeah. And I was looking and thinking like, well, so what are we going to do? <laughs> and the thing that I was thinking about is like, uh, we've been talking about church structure because we're dealing with uh, uh, this, this session number six. And it was called Ordering the Church, Understanding Church Structure and Accountability. And we kind of, we really have gone through this and kind of dug it out really well. But, you know, last week we was looking at some examinations of ourselves. And, and it's like a good time for, number one, if we see if there was any that had questions. You know, because even though you may have been in church a long time, that some things may not be clear. And this would be a good opportunity for us to do that. But then when I looked around, everybody here is like, all been on the battlefield for a long time and yet still it's a great opportunity for us to not only reflect on what god is doing in us in the midst of the church but also to see like if there's some things that we can do to to make it more accessible and make it more profitable in the long run for those that are coming along behind us right okay because that's so important that we that we work as if we're gonna live forever and we work as if we're gonna meet God tomorrow right. or even today. You understand? We gotta have a, a sense of preparedness and readiness. And as we've been looking at this lesson, one of the things that, that kind of the Spirit has kept challenging me with was the fact that it said that every member, every church member should be fully engaged in ministry. And when you think about that, that's convicting because you got to figure we're probably not there yet. Yeah. See, so so then so if we're not there yet, that's 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 fine because yeah, God's just identifying where we at, so we can move to where we need to be, right? right. So then when when I, as I was thinking about that, that's why I was thinking about like who was going to be here and who could share with us because you know there should be uh, some. The author has talked about and has reminded us that every every church should have some developmental processes in place. You know, where people are being trained and opportunities to or to be trained to be able to use the gifts of God, right? And we know that House of Prayer Evangelist Church is a very gifted church where God is moving, his, his spirit is active, and it's not centralized in one place. God is moving through many people in the congregation. And yet in the midst of that, we know he's in control because there's clear defined order and there's clear accountability and all of the things of God are in place that we've been discussing over this past few weeks, right? As we've been talking about the things about accountability and opportunities and all that, we check out pretty good on those boxes, right? 
Were you out here? Yeah. So when we, we, there wasn't very much that we felt convicted about as far as like, you know, things that the author was talking about should be in place in a healthy church that aren't already ongoing here at, at House of Prayer, right? And so, uh, and, and then even like last, when you think about last week's service, there was even like some pretty prophetic moments and some new new offices and some new uh, uh, gifts of, of God were being spoken of in, in the midst of us, right? So that's a still, uh, it's, it's a demonstration that God is actively moving in our presence. And you know, you should never count that light. You know, I mean, you should you should take that for granted. Like that's how it's supposed to be. Whereas that is how it's supposed to be. That's true and living, active evidence that God is moving in that place. You know, and not all churches are at that level right now. Some may be a place where they need revival. You know, and and a healthy church will be re being revived ongoing. As we minister one to another, the Lord will be reviving us and stirring our spirit to go deeper in him to, to grow, right? Because that's the whole idea is, is that we're gonna grow and we're gonna grow in the unity of the faith, right? Amen. Unity being the, 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 the harmonic chord that we're searching for, even in the midst of this great orchestra that God is conducting, okay? Because whose church is it? Did he, how did he get it? He purchased it with his very own blood. That's what the scripture says. Jesus purchased it with his very own blood, right? And we know that, right? And, and we trust in that. And because of that, we belong to him. Because even though it happened more than 2,000 and something years ago, he said, even to those who will believe on my name. And that's you and I, right? And we've been baptized in his spirit because when we accepted him and confessed him, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. And he placed us in the in the body of Christ, right? So now we're saying all that because now we're wrapping it up. So when, as we start to wrap the thing up, we want to be looking for fruit and, and opportunities for more fruit, right? I mean, because even if you're doing a good job, we all still have room to grow. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, because until God calls you home, you know what else you gonna be doing? That's right. You know, if you're idle. You wide open for the devil to start racking you up. Yep. You see, so that whole engagement, that's why it's such a privilege to be involved in God's service. You know, and then when you consider the fact that he knows everything about us, and he still wants to use us. Man, that's grace in action right there. You know, and, and it's something to be cherished. And you know, those opportunities to be cherished. So we talked about the, the bishop, we talked about the deacons, and we talked about decrees, desires, and unity. Those were our words to know. And uh, does, it, does anybody offhand remember what the C verse was? Let all of them. Yeah, First Corinthians fourteen and forty. It is an open book text. <laughs> Feel free to use your materials. But yeah, that was it, Mama. You said it, but could somebody read it? 1440. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 1440. Uh, verse 4, right? Four, chapter 14, verse 40. First Corinthians, okay, okay. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Yeah. That's okay. Christian. What is that, Christian? That's NIV. That's NIV? Yeah, that's yeah it, it's the same one. That was the one in the printed text also. Yeah, but let everything be done in a fitting and orderly manner. That's good. You know, so that's God's plan. God is a God of order. Yes, he is. You know, when he looked at the earth from the very beginning, God spoke and order became. He set boundaries. He established rules and laws, you know, for nature and man to operate under. And it's so that it's such that in the church. And it's, it's good because we don't have to come in with the idea that we need to create something for God. Preach, preacher. No, he's already established, you know, order in how things are to be conducted. And, you know, and the good thing about it is that God is ever changing. So he, it never gets stale. 
You know, I mean, because he doesn't get still. He, he's, he's alive and he's active. And, you know, and he's, 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 he's the self-existent one. Nobody else can say that. <laughs> the self-existent one. He is life. And so he, 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 knows, he knows the changes that we're going through. He knows the times that we're going through. But you know what? He's so sovereign in his actions that he can still keep the very principles intact and change the method to where nothing of his word is violated. Right. Yeah. And that's even hard for us to understand and, and to comprehend, if we're honest. You know what I mean? Because my, 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 my understanding is limited. That's what finite means. That means that, that my brain only goes so far so long and it's wiped. You know, if you've seen me after a real long hard day at work, you, you know, yeah, it's all my face. It's wiped. <laughs> to go home, go to bed. <laughs> but no, but God is beyond that. And, and, and we have forever and eternity to continue to learn more about Him. That's one of the exciting things about being in His presence, man. You know, that we can continue to see and learn new things about him. And, and I'm, I'm saying that now because even as we progress in our development, then we want to be open-minded and excited about what we're learning about God every day. Yes, sir. Uh, you brought out something that came to my mind with Women's Month. Mm -hmm. One of the speakers had spoke about everything uh, when she came into this facility everything was in order uh -huh. you know everything was necessary it was, it was oh, <laughs> everything was like it was it was necessary it wasn't things that was in here that was unnecessary right. mm -hmm. and it made me feel good to know that we're not trying to do extra right. stuff mm -hmm. and one of the things about the pandemic it, sh it shaved off a lot of the extra stuff that the body of Christ was doing, you know, as far as, you know, in the earth realm and uh, services and, you know, things that when you look back on it, it was totally unnecessary, you know. And, and some of the things wasn't biblical anyway. Right. And so it, it brought us back to a, a place of importance. And so it just was a blessing to hear you say that, is that, you know, we can do things in decency and in order, you know, according to what God has set as a standard. And so that was just what I wanted to add to that. I appreciate that. And, and it, goes, it really does go hand in hand with where God has us. Because see, all of us should be taking evaluations. Should be looking at stuff. You know, that's, that's why the, the, the author has encouraged us to have a seed journal. Because when, you know, when you open up to God, God will show you some stuff. You know, stuff about you, Stuff about services, because I like to say it like this: He cut out the fluff. You know, in some services, church is full of fluff, to where there's no real meat in there, Harley. You got to search for those nuggets of, of truth that can, you can live by. Come on now. But you know, it's not that way here, and that's a clear example of God's presence in this place. See, so it's a it's a sacred moment and it's a it's a it's a it's a unique period in history that we are all sharing. You know, because we're here together and we're fellowshipping with that. But we don't want to be like that group coming out of Egypt was because all of them went through the cloud and all of them went through the water, but all of them didn't experience God. See? And one of the things that we should have been picking up on as we've been going through this is that God designed the church so that it will grow by what each joint supplies. That's the Holy Spirit is working in each joint. And you and joint. Yep. We are law. We are sinews and muscle and we come to connect to form the body of Christ. Right. And oh how much more power exponentially we have when we unite on that level of understanding and growth. So as we're coming to this, and I, I see now as more people are coming in, you know, we got the ministry is represented, we have the deacons and the deaconesses are represented, we have the ushers are represented, we have teaching ministry represented, we have some other parts of the administration represented. And, you know, and I just kind of wanted to think, because like as we was looking at it, remember last week when he was asking some questions like, 
And one of the questions that, during the harvesting time, which is where we stop, and one of the questions that he talked about is, what opportunities have you missed and why? Right. You know, opportunities to give service for God. You know, I mean, uh, now, I don't know how you are about take, test taking. Some people, when they take the test, once they walk out of the room, they never think about that stuff again. So it can come back on the very next test and you will miss the same questions because you don't right. even think about it, right? right? But other people may be thinking about it all the way home and then forget it. But I'm saying, I'm saying, so how you evaluate yourself, we may be different. Mm -hmm. But think in your own heart about opportunities when you know God was giving you a chance to do something for Him. And then think about the things that we allow to interfere with that. And pretty much we probably all found out, probably all going to center around some selfish idea. Mm -hmm. Some place where I, my feelings, my thoughts, my whatever was more important than the glory of God in that situation. I, I would think that would probably be common. You know, if not number one, it's in the top three or four, five of your reasons why you didn't do that. You understand? Other things may come, be, may feel like inadequately prepared. And I bring that up because it's so important that one of the things we've been talking about here is that are there programs, are there opportunities, are there settings within your church where you can be getting prepared? See, and the resounding question, I mean, answer to that question over this period that we've been going through this has been, yes, that existed. But then now it comes back to what about your personal appetite? Do you have a personal appetite to be being prepared for service for God? See, and everybody has to answer that for themselves. And that's a direct indicator of how much your desire is for God. Because if you feel Him and you're thankful for all that you know He's doing, then the proper response would be, that's my reasonable service. That's my reasonable act of worship, is to be walking in preparedness. And, you know, sometimes what we can do is we can get complacent. And we, because we went to Bible study like maybe 15 years ago and was intense about it, you may say, well, oh, I know all that stuff now. But is that true? Most, most likely no. You know what I mean? We have to be refreshed. And, and, and the beautiful thing about the scripture is that it's alive anyway. So well, when I read the same scripture tomorrow, God may give me a whole different insight on that that I never even saw before. Even just as simple as the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not walk. Ooh, he can flip that around in so many ways to challenge me when I'm afraid, to encourage me when I'm disappointed, you know, to lift up my head when I feel downtrodden. You know, God does that. Yep. So as we as we so the, the next book, the last question on that says, what opportunities are you taking advantage of to work with others to enhance the work of each group, decrease church costs? and increase outreach potential? Ooh, that was a loaded question. But when I thought about it, I immediately thought about the group of men that are helping to refurbish this building. That helped to save the church a lot of money. You know, the wisdom and insight that God gave Pastor as a site coordinator helps to save a whole lot. You know, based on what somebody doing that job would be being paid. And you notice it still comes down to functionality. We don't want to, and that was one of the things that we talked about over the course of this month that we was looking at this, is that, you know, we're supposed to be servant leaders. Yep. You know, it's not about title. Not, not the sit-down title where, you know, you get to, the, the, you know, the, the, your, tea, the, your tea group that come by and sip coffee with you and just talk about how good you're doing while y'all sitting there. We don't have that here. There's no, there's no place for that. 
Everything needs to be about work and about action. And so that's why everybody can play a part. Because at best, we all can be helpers, right? Yeah. If it's nothing more than carrying a chair or getting a drink of water for somebody that may yes, not be sir. feeling well, yes, sir. you know, or being an ear, a listener, when somebody's in distress, you know, just sensing and saying, sister, you don't have to even tell me, but I can tell that something don't feel right today. I just want you to know I love you and Jesus loves you too. Just something, something. Have great impact for the for the kingdom of God. Yeah. And and these are things that we can consider and should be considering if we're walking with God daily. Because He'll show you that. See, so that's when it says, so so what opportunities are am I preparing for that? So if you're afraid uh, that you're not prepared to, to be somebody down the wrong was wrong. Uh, are you asking anybody about that? Are you even talking to anybody? Are you openly praying, first of all, God, give me a spirit to evangelize. Right. Take away that spirit of fear. You know, this, this is the beginning steps of active service toward God. It's when the spirit identifies something to you that we come to him pray. He's our power source. He said we can do what without him? All things. We can do all things with him, but I can't do nothing without him. So, and then even when Paul talked about working out my own salvation, he said working out with fear and trembling. Because it's God at work in you, giving you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, if you feel in your heart that you want to serve God, God gave you that. And, but it's, it's no harm to say, well, yeah, but I don't understand any of this. And he can, he can operate right there. You know, I mean, when you look at it, two examples that seem almost the same, but clearly were different by the response of God to, toward them. Remember in the birth of announcement to Jesus, uh, of, of Jesus to Mary? She said, how could this be? I don't know, man. And God gave her grace and favor, right? But when Zacchaeus was in there, the man of God who was supposed to do, and he told him what was going to happen, and he basically said kind of like the same thing, this can't happen. And God shut his mouth, shut his mouth up to the baby was born. Right. Mm -hmm. So something about the way he responded in his heart, See, and I, I, I say that openly because we should be warned that when God approaches us, that's what I was talking about. This is a sacred moment in time that many of us may just be thinking like it's ordinary. Right. But when you see what God's doing in the midst of this congregation with the people as well so as with the environment, man, God is at work. Amen. This is unique. And it's mar it should be marvelous in our eyes. So when you see that, and you see God like reaching in and touching and changing and reforming, I mean, real people with real faith with real problems with, the, with real change. It's what's going on here. And you can see it. That's, that's a, to be desired. You understand? So in that moment, we want to be conscious of God. And as he's speaking to me, and I'm, I'm using the proper ad, uh, pronoun because I want you to put your name in that spot. As he's speaking to me. And I want to hear what he's saying and I want to be responsive. And, and it may start off with me just asking him, well, show me how to, how to, how to do that. Yeah. Show me who I need to talk to. You know, I, I know I need to talk to the pastor, but who else? Is there anybody else in the congregation that, that you want to connect me with? You see? These are the opportunities for preparation that we all have, you know? I mean, so as we, and, and, and it's, it's an open invitation from God, not just me, but it's from God, that we would take a part in that. So um, that's pretty much all we have for the harvest of the time, I mean, for the harvest of time, which kind of much brings us to a close, but um, sister, hold on, hold on, she'll get a mic, because she's talking really soft. And we want to hear you. There you go. Okay, thank you. Okay, I was thinking about this uh, this title 
uh, uh, order in the church mm -hmm. and the, the definitions of each person, you know, bishop or deacon, mm -hmm. you know, or superintendent, mm -hmm. you know, this will give us insight into places that are not moving in divine order. Oh, yeah. If you think about cults mm -hmm. and people who get off the road into their own thing, mm -hmm. it's because people do not know God's order. Right. And if we know this is God's order, the, the pastor is the under shepherd, of course he's the chief shepherd, mm -hmm. pastor is the under shepherd, and then the other things, you know, the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And it's a good it's a good lesson because God has order. Yes. He doesn't do things our way. Right. It is like the military. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got people, there's a hierarchy there. And we know it functions when everybody gets together in one accord. Right. So I thank God for this lesson about order in the church. We can't prosper unless we are in divine order. We can't, you know, if you look back in the Old Testament, you remember Korah? We're just as holy as Moses. And we know they come to a bad end. Yeah. Because they weren't, you know, a function in divine order. So this is a good lesson. You know, that we need to just take the heart. If we don't know the order, we can certainly learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Amen. I appreciate you saying that out loud, because that's my heart, too. I mean, because, you know, he says that my people suffer for lack of knowledge. But in that, there's a thing that some people just turned off by. They ain't trying to get it. See? But what she's saying is that this is a, this is really important stuff. And there may be some people, and still even now, that what I was about to ask is, is there anybody that has any questions about how you see order in the church or, or you know, what's your understanding of it? You know, we got a little time. But we don't want to move past that if there was something that we could have done collectively. Because, I mean, if I don't have an answer, you got a pastor sitting right here. He got much of wisdom and understanding in this room. So if there's any, anybody that had questions about anything, everybody clear about what a deacon should be doing. If you if, if somebody wants to ask you, where in the Bible would I find out about a deacon? Does anybody know where that passage is in scripture? Acts chapter 6. Yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing it out there so we can. Because you'll see it was born out of necessity. But when it was done right, it said that the church grew. And see, even here, you know, we got an expanded uh, building. But God's going to feel that, right? That's why we was moving, because we was getting too big for the little building, right? So, but when we're in order, see, then pastors can be concentrated on, on prayer and, and, and ministering the word. And then God will be blessed. See, and, and that's the whole thing about the hierarchy. It was like just for, for order and accountability. Yeah, and we, I, you know, I, I you know, it's, it's not like a bromance or nothing, but I love my pastor. I mean, I love you, too. you know, and I say that because, man, we be joking about him because we work with him through the weekend. Man, he be on. Yeah. I'm talking like he be like Inspector General on all of it to make sure that the work is done, not only decent and in order, but it's done saving the church as much as possible yeah. without wasting the church as much. And, and he, you can see God utilizing them for creative ideas, you know, and implementing this thing. You know, and you just see the progress from it, but you know I mean? It should be such that we still had the before pictures so that now that the after is starting to take shape that we wouldn't lose sight of how bad this place looked when we came to it. But I'm, I'm, and I'm only saying that to say this, that any yielded vessel to God can be used to do extraordinary great things. Preacher. I think it's in Daniel. He says, those that know their God should do great exploits. Anybody here know their God? Amen. See? I mean, because it's in these moments that we intimately take that in and, 
and you really allow that to grow in your heart and in your spirit, that you see God's just power just blowing up in your life. Amen. Yes, sir. You, you're totally on it. You're totally clear because we belong to God and he's given us all this stuff mm -hmm. to steward. Mm -hmm. right. And it's our responsibility to be good stewards of. That mm -hmm. means, you know, your family, you know, as, as a man, the husband, you oversee it all. Mm -hmm. And even though sometimes everybody else don't see the vision, you still lay it out before them and you still go forward in prayer. And that's one of the reasons why prayer is really important because you can get aggravated and agitated when things are not going the way you want them to go. Mm -hmm. Or when things are not happening as, as, as fast as you want them to go. Mm -hmm. And so when you bring that out, even in mentioning, you know, uh, renovation, it's not my responsibility to make other people feel bad even though they made a mistake. So I have to be conscious of how to approach people. And that's the same way the Lord is with us. He's tender with us. And so what you're saying is so important because we have a whole lot of stuff to steward. Well, I'll give you an example of that. Even as we, you know, go to this place and that place during the day in the course of a week, we get stuff, and if we don't steward all the stuff that's coming in our house, we have a house full of stuff. Right. So we have to go back, and some stuff we got to throw away. Some stuff we got to put up. Some stuff we got to say, you know what, really I don't need this. Right. And so we're not, you know, like even mail, for example, if you don't go through that mail, that mail stack up, and you won't even have nowhere to walk in your house. Right. You can't even open your refrigerator because the mail is in the way. Right. And so it's, it's, it's vital that we as God's people, we belong to the Lord. We're not, we don't belong to ourselves. Right. We are the steward. That means oversee. That must, means do inventory over everything that he has given us. That's decency and in order. Because you can easily let things go down. You can have a good thriving ministry and all of a sudden because you're not stewarding it. You're not, you, you're haphazard. You, you know, you're not really, you know, diligent. You don't have a diligent hand. Stuff can start getting real raggedy. Yes. And it won't glorify God if it's raggedy. And so that's what I'm going to ask. Right. I love that. So it means keeping it close to your heart to want to do what's pleasing to God. You know, that desire to, to please him. You know, that's got to be the driver for us. It really does. Um, is there any questions from the group? Anybody got comments or thoughts about, you know, how they see things or don't see things? Are we clear with this? One best. Uh, when you brought up decency and order, which is a great lesson and a great you know, foundation for us as now God is calling people to go forth and, you know, to do and to speak. Mm -hmm. And so, it, during the pandemic, people have created a platform for themselves. And now they're, they got their own Bible study. They got their own this. And some of them have never ran it past me. Right. You know, and so, it, and there's probably many other pastors who have you know, have to stomach that and see that people have gone on but have not had a conversation with the pastor, you know, the overseer of, you know, them spiritually, that, hey, listen, the Lord has put this on my heart. Not even going to say, oh, not right now, unless you're not right now ready. Right. And so sometimes people don't, because they don't want to hear, no, or they don't want to hear, okay, well, listen, you need to work on this. So you need, you know, because some people, they like Martha. They get busy doing a whole lot of stuff, and they are they are in, in love with the master's work, but not in love with the master. And so that needs to be you know understood. That, okay, what about your quiet time? What about your time in prayer? What about your preparation time? What about the seasons in which God sent us for? Right. Some people like David, he didn't even occupy the throne for a long time. But he was anointed to do this work by the Lord Most High. And so that's a, 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 a thing that I'm, I'm seeing that people are just going for doing so many things, saying, you know, I was a prophet, you know, I'm a this, you know, I'm a that. And, and you know, there's mirrors everywhere. Right. Look at your life. 
And is your life lining up with what you believe that God has called you to do? That's what indecency and in order. And people be mad at you and, and be, be upset with you for giving them real. But if you're going to step up, if you're going to do something for God, look to be instructed. Look to be a correct. The correction is not rejection. Sure is not. And sometimes people don't even have good comprehension uh, skills and abilities, and they ready to go forth in that level or that magnitude of ministry. Right. And you can't even understand when somebody's saying this, you're hearing this. That's not what that person said. And so these are things that when you start talking about indecency and order, man, we can go weeks on this. Yeah. Because we have a whole lot of people that are super spiritual, that are involved in a whole lot of things, but they don't even know truth. Right. You got to have truth before you, with your spirit. If you're going to have spiritual, if you're going to flow and, and levitate, if you're going to, you know, do signs and wonders, you got to have some truth backing that up. Absolutely. If you're a woman of God, you're a man of God, man of God, you still got to cut the grass. Woman of God, you still got to make sure some eggs is fried in there. Or your family going to, you know, be malnutrition. Unless you're going to go and let McDonald's feed them. And so these things must be understood just because you are the next Juanita Bynum or the next uh, Billy Graham. You got to wash them clothes in there. Right. Yeah. And so these are things that we have to understand. We can't be so up in heaven that we ain't no good down here. And so I just think that in DC and order is a vast subject. And I think you're doing a good job, Brother Cliff. But in, during this pandemic, we got a whole lot to say, especially over this new thing called the internet and Facebook Live and Twitter and TikTok and all this. You know, we need to really be still and get acquainted with the Lord. I, I fight that. That's one of the things that I have to beat my body in submission so I can not only fast and pray. One of the things in D.C. and order, everybody should be fasting in this church on Thursday. Every, should nobody be eating nothing. They should be drinking water and reading the Word of God every Thursday. Why? Because we are in transition. We are working on people's lives. We want these marriages strong. Marriages, boy, so many people having so many trouble in families and, and with these adult children. We need to make sure that we beat our flesh in subjection to God's Holy Spirit. And so this has been the call of the pastor. And some, you know, they ain't frying and eating and going on and, and drinking their coffee and stuff like the fast have not been even called. Right. And not only that, they money, they spending it like it, it's not a season to tie. Like it's not a season to give your, to your building fund. It's like it's not a season to give your special seed offerings. They spending it. And so as a result, we have to be in fasting and praying that we can be unified. He said, endeavoring to be, keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We want to be unified. That way we can do great and awesome things. We're not there yet. Right. Sure, we got this place, this, and we got this done. But there's still a, a long way to go. So it should be a life goal of all of us. Not to send $25 down here and you didn't made 600 You know, not, you know, you made eight hundred dollars between you and your wife, and you put twenty twenty four dollars in the offering. That's not tied then. No. And so, when you a real deal saint, when you a real deal Christian, you know that money is for the exchange. Its value is for the exchange. Money can't, you know, feed me unless I exchange it for food. Right. And so, God has given us seed so we can sow it. And so this is what we say in decency and order. And so now we can send folks forward and, and, and in ministry, but they're not even given. Right. Right. Who's going to speak about that in house of prayer? Nobody but the pastor. Yes. And so this is some of the things in which we must come up in this area because we can't faint over some time. Right. But, but God is, you know, he's the one who's supplying all our needs. And so during this time, we need to look at what we're not doing that we should be doing, and then we can be 
decency in it all. Yes, yes, beautiful, perfect. And it went right along with what sister was talking about, because you know when they try to train people about counterfeit money, they make them look at the real money. You know everything about the real, so then you see the counterfeit, and it's automatic, like, oh, no, that, that's not a order. And that's how we should be in this place. You know, and God has set a, a good tone here. It, it's, it's, but I, I had to smile because some of us have gotten ahead. Because some people think that disciples are born. No, disciples are made. Yeah. You have to have that period where you surrender and su submit yourself unto somebody to become a disciple. Amen. And that's what Jesus want to use. He want to do a work in you before he do a work through you. But a lot of people skip from point A to get to point Z and messing up some stuff along the way. So as we come to a close today, we've got much to think about, much to consider, because it is ongoing. And this really was kind of somewhat of an introduction, because I'm, I'm convinced that there's still some, maybe even here right now, that I'm not sure about some of this. But just didn't feel comfortable enough to talk about it. And that's really what we're trying to create is an atmosphere where we can learn from one another. And we can only do that as we open up about what we don't know and even check some of the stuff that we do know. Remember we said all scripture is what? Given for the inspiration of God. And it's probable for what? The reproof. For women, for reproof. So that means that if I was right, I can see that I was right. But if I was wrong, then the next part says, for what? Correction. Correction. <laughs> that the man of God is fully mature. I mean, don't mean without blame or without uh, any flaws, because we all have some flaws. But we can be fully mature in Christ. That's the goal. And that's the goal here at this Sunday school. So, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our time with you today. We thank you for calmly just talking to us. And we thank you for giving us an opportunity really just to evaluate and look at ourselves and the church in which we serve. Well, we thank you that your word is perfect and true. Yeah, Lord. And we confess that in, even with that in your spirit, there's some stuff that we need to work on. So we ask you to, first of all, forgive us for stubbornness and not wanting to. And then, Lord, we pray for your namesake, that you would stir up your spirit within us so that you would transform our ideas and thoughts to match the desires that you have for our lives. Lord, when you saved us, you had something in mind for us to do. Lord, help us to be more fruitful in that. Be that purging us and pruning us, or be that starting us all over again if we completely missed the mark. Lord, we lay it all at your feet, confessing that you are the inspector, and we can't hide anything from you. So thank you for your grace, for you've been kind to us. Even when our rebellion, you still were merciful. So we thank you for that, and we ask you to give us just another chance so that we can lend ourselves to you, that we will give glory to you, and that our brothers and sisters will be built up and our families will be better, our communities will be better. Lord, our cities and states will be better when we surrender our lives to you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for proving it at the cross. Lord, thank you for reminding us every day to your spirit. We count all of this done in the strong name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.